Every team has now played at least 21 matches in this Canadian Premier League season, which means we are now officially three quarters of the way through the season. And it has been a wild one. There is a super tight race for first and throughout the entire playoff places. And every week, the positions are constantly shifting. Here's how things stand with just six or seven games remaining for each team. In last place, we have Vancouver FC. Vancouver FC was always going to have a tough run of things as an expansion team, but as this season's gone on, their performances have not picked up and arguably have gotten worse. The defense continues to slide off. They went from allowing nine goals in the first seven games to 14 in the second seven games to now 17 goals against in the third quarter of the season. So the defense went from being pretty decent to now just letting everything in. And while the defense is bad, the offensive side of things aren't looking good either. Sean Hundall, who early on in the season was in the midst of the golden boot race has fallen off only scoring three goals in the last 14 games and Alejandro Diaz last year's CPL's leading scorer who was brought in halfway through the season exploded out of the gate scoring a goal in each of his first two games for Vancouver but has not scored since then with zero goals in the last five matches at this point in the season Vancouver FC has just become cannon father for other teams when you go to play Vancouver it's almost a guaranteed win and 15 points out of the playoff spaces, Vancouver FC is all but mathematically eliminated from the playoffs. It's been a decent first season, but unfortunately it comes with very little wins. In seventh, we have Valor FC. Now, Valor has fallen off to almost as bad as Vancouver at this point. They've only picked up one more point in the past seven games than Vancouver FC has. The defense, which in my mid-season review I was heralding as the best defense in the CPL, has completely fallen off. After allowing just 14 goals in the first 14 matches of the season, they've allowed 14 against in the last seven, falling off to overall the third worst defense in the league from the best just seven games ago. Their offense is still the worst in the league. They did manage to score three goals against Cavalry somehow a couple games ago, which is the first time this season they've scored more than two. But in the past seven, they've also been shut out three times and the offense still overall just bought of the league. At 12 points out of the playoffs, Valor still has an outside chance at potentially making it, but it would take a miracle. In sixth place, we have York United, the most chaotic team in the league. York United in this past seven game stretch had two consecutive 3-3 draws at one point. All offense, no defense. York United is just a crazy team to watch week in, week out. Now, overall, as the season's gone on, they have fallen off as Halifax and Atletico have risen, causing York now to fall out of the playoff places. And also, this team just has been completely unlucky with injuries and suspensions. They've had multiple major injuries to key players, and most recently they have had this Osaze de Rosario month-long suspension for de Rosario testing positive for THC, which is a ridiculous suspension, and the fact that York United loses one of their most promising young strikers in a key part of the season for a month because of that suspension is just disastrous for their season. Now, three points out of the playoffs with six games left, York United does does have a chance to make it, but they need to pick their form up and take advantage of other teams in the playoff spots potentially falling off. Now York, all they need to do is figure out how to win at home. On the road, York United is the top team in the league. On road standings, York United is in first, but at home standings, they're dead last. They get a couple wins at home and keep up their road form, they're in the playoffs. Moving on to the last playoff spot in fifth place, we have Forge FC. Forge have never in their history been this low in the standings this late into the season in the Canadian Premier League. After an incredible first seven games where Forge had four wins and three draws in their first seven games and were looking comfortably in first place, they have only had four wins in their next 15 matches. That's right, in their first seven matches, they have the same number of wins as they have in their last 15. At 2-4-1 and one in their last seven, Forge haven't been spectacular, but they also haven't been bad. Only one loss, mostly drawing matches. They 
aren't in like the danger zone. Like they're competing with good teams. They're drawing good high level teams in the CPL. They're just unable to win right now. Now they are in a four way tie for second place of 32 points, but they have played one more game than those other three teams. So Forge needs to pick it up in these last couple of games. They need to get back in the win column or else if York has a good run, they could be looking at falling out of the playoffs. In fourth place, we have the Halifax Wanderers. The Wanderers were four, one and two in their last seven games, making the second straight stretch of games that they've gone four, one and two. This is a team that has become unstoppable at home. They're seven, one and two at home. They've turned Wanderers ground into a fortress where just no one gets anything out of that stadium except for them. They just need to find ways to get more wins on the road and then they'll be higher up in the standings. At one, seven and three on the road, that is the only thing holding them back and if they can get a couple more wins and this last couple stretch of the season, move themselves into a top two, top three position so that they get the majority of their playoff run at home. This is a team that could go very, very far in this playoffs. Now, Jao Morelli coming back for this team has been massive too. Four goals in seven games for Jao Morelli since his return. This was a team that already offensively was starting to pick things up and the addition of Jao Morelli has just made the offense that much better. And defensively too, in the past seven games especially, they've been great. They have gotten four clean sheets in the last seven games, which has put them up to having the best defense in the CPL at only 22 goals conceded. And a big part of that is Dan Nimick. Dan Nimick, the 22 year old center back, has just been in incredible form recently. He's scoring goals. He's been fantastic defensively. He's put himself into not only the CPL Defender of the Year conversation, but has put himself into Canadian national team consideration conversation with how good he has been for Halifax in these past couple of months. I think Halifax is easily going to make the playoffs this season. They just have the form right now that if that just continues, they do not look like a team that's going to be in danger of falling out of the playoff spots. In third, we have Atletico Ottawa. 4-2-1 and one in their last seven. Ottawa is the biggest riser in the seven game window, up from sixth at the halfway point. Now, Ottawa had a rough start to the season. At the first quarter mark, they were in last. The halfway mark, they were in sixth. But nine games ago, they brought in Alberto Zapater, the 38-year-old Spanish midfielder. And since then, they are 6-2-1. and one. He transformed this team. The stability of Zapater in the midfield has brought Ottawa back to the form that I think everyone expected them to have and brought Ottawa back to their 2022 form. He just has been a massive signing for them mid-season. Probably the best mid-season signing in the CPL this year. In addition to the success of Zapater, Ollie Bassett remains elite, being tied with Taron Campbell for first place in the Golden Boot race with 10 goals. So things are just clicking right now for Ottawa and they are consistently climbing the standings. In second place, we have Pacific FC. Now Pacific FC has fallen off a bit recently. They've lost three straight and they're only two, one and four in their past seven. The offense, which I praised, at the mid-season break has mostly dried up recently. They've been shut out in four of their last seven. The group of Ongaro, Yun, Didich, Aparicio, and Aloof that I praised their group goal scoring capabilities at the halfway mark. In the past seven games, that group of players has only scored one goal coming from Aloof. The Pacific team offense that was flying throughout the first half of the season has all dried up. Somehow all of their guys who were just great goal scorers are like consistent being good team goal scorers the whole way through the beginning of the season all dried up at the same time and the offense has just completely dried up and Pacific has lost what looked like a solid lead at the top of the table. In the last quarter of the season they have the worst form of all six teams battling for the five playoff positions. If they don't recover their form and they continue this slide they are going to miss the playoffs despite having a huge lead at the halfway mark. So luckily they have a game in hand against York so they have an extra game to figure things out but if this slide continues and Pacific loses a couple more games in a row, the playoffs could slip away from a team that looked like they were going to easily win the league seven games ago. And finally, at the top of the table right now, we have Cavalry FC. 5-0-2 in their last seven. Cavalry has strung together the best seven game window of any team in the CPL this season. 14 goals for also in the last seven games. The offense is flying and now sits best in the league. Leading the way in that is 
Meyer Beaven, who has nine goals on the season, second in the Golden Boot race, but also William Accio, who they brought in recently, has four goals in his first six games for Cavalry. So he has just been a massive signing and provided a huge boost to what already was a good offense, but he has just been an X factor for them and has been a huge contributor in their rise in this last seven game stretch. Cavalry now sits four points clear at the top of the table with seven games remaining. So they have a whole match day lead over the rest of the league at the top of the table. They are in very good position to go ahead and win the 2023 CPL regular season, especially if their current form keeps up. So there you have it. That's how things stand three quarters of the way into this 2023 Canadian Premier League season. Of the eight teams, six of them are still very much in the race, not just for the playoffs, but also for the championship. Only seven points separating first and sixth place with most teams having six or seven games to go any of those top six could still finish anywhere in the standings, and that just is making this season so interesting. And especially for the regular season championship, with a CONCACAF Champions Cup spot on the line for that first place regular season finish, that just adds so much more intrigue and so much more excitement to that race going forward. So that is it for this video. As always, if you'd like to hit like and cost you more of my stuff, hit subscribe, follow me on Twitter, link is down below in the description, and I will see you next time.